Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is another exhibition match. I'm Shadow Fury 3 with a match between Daywalker and El Torero on Melt. This is a map that has not been seen a whole lot recently. I don't think I've ever cast it either. It's a really cool map, though, actually. It's got a nice little terrain set up. All, everything starts out in... It's also really, really bright. Excuse me one second. I need to reduce the brightness slightly. Mm, that will work. Yes, that will work just fine. So, anyway, brightness aside, it is a map with a lot of pits. You see, both players start out in a pit, and there are a lot of other pits, all of them with metal in them. So all the metal extractors, except a few on the sides, have pits in them, and there are a lot of hills. This is a very, very bot-oriented map. Unlike Archer's Valley, which we saw before, this basically does not support vehicles at all. It does support Cloakie, it does support Spider, both players are going for Cloakie, and Daywork are going for a very quick scythe. He does have E-Cell and Particle Beam, while, on the other hand, El Torero has... Oh, he's going for Commander Junior, not even going for Morphable Commander. Interesting choice there. No E-Cell for him, but he does have an instant laser. Though on a map like this, I'm not sure how likely rating is to be that early, before you would normally get a morph. However, El Torero is starting to stall a bit. He does have... He has far less energy, that's the big thing. He is getting up some power plants to try to make up for this, but... Daywalker has all of his energy needs met from his commander alone, just getting some supplementary energy in order to overdrive and then ultimately to support later on more metal expansion. The scythe is... let's see where the scythe is moving. Right now it is moving over to... well, it's scouting out. Not quite sure where El Torero has started up, but it is scouting himself... It is scouting him out just to make sure that Daywalker knows what's going on. And Daywalker is... oh, right. Daywalker is going to be... Actually, that radar is not in the best spot. I point out, radar is only able to look to... Th it can't look through things. It, it gets stopped by mountains and so forth. However, that should be still enough for Daywalker to know what's going on inside of his base. But I'm sure he'll be building a radar up, up this hill somewhere. And that will likely happen pretty shortly. However, El Torero trying to raid, but not able to do too much. The glaives from Daywalker able to stop that. The scythe's still going along its merry way. It's going to be able to stop this expansion, or at least intercept this expansion, probably get stopped by the commander. But at the same time, Glaive going down to the south just to make sure that El Torero has not set up any harassment units in the way. Though on a map like this, with all these hills, it's pretty easy to set up just sneaky units around the map, just keeping units there and then dropping them in once your opponent has expanded in an area. Not something either player is doing. Both players are focusing a bit more on economy, and like I said, El Torero did get energy stalled early on. That has slowed him down a bit. Well, Daywalker's a little bit more concerned about defense. But he's also getting his economy, and he does have a power advantage. In terms of metal at this point, both players are basically even, but El Torero is just now recovering from that energy stall. Getting himself out of that and starting to build at a pretty normal rate for his units. Now, here comes that scythe. It will intercept the commander. Or no, it won't intercept the commander. El Torero apparently don't have to worry about it. It's just it was already in a path not to intercept the commander. There was a nice little hill there that made it a little bit different, made his path go a little bit off, and able to get rid of this laser tower. What is El Torero going to do? Where is he focused right now? It looks like El Torero is right now focused. He is focused on his base. He is getting his units into position to deal with this. Glaive's coming in to get rid of this size, but it is already able to get rid of everything so far. It got rid of everything in this base. Trying to get out of the way and able to recloak, but the Glaives found it and are able to stop it. There it goes right at the last second, but able to go down nonetheless. And Erector coming in to rebuild everything. While at the same time, Daywalker building towards the north side of the map instead of going towards the south side, or... Well, instead of going along the east side of the map to the south, it's going west along the north edge of the map. Well, his glaives are all going towards the center, and from there we'll be going over to this expansion to just properly finish it off. Now, El Torero, on the other hand, looks like he has his own glaives, probably for defense. Not quite sure where Daywalker is going to come in from, and I should point out right now that El Torero also has radar in not that great of a spot. He has, an El he has radar in one of the valleys, he doesn't have it on any of the hills, and right now Daywalker... He doesn't have any radar on the hills either. So neither player is that focused on where their radar is. I should point out also for economy that as it stands, El Torero has... What the? Anyway, El Torero right now has about... It's like six metal extractors and Daywalker has nine. 
or thereabouts. Or well, no less for El Toro. He's just lost that expansion over to the south and been a bit cut off. He doesn't have enough laser turrets here to defend against, well, some of the glaives. I'm not sure about all of them. And the glaives are coming in pretty powerfully. One nice thing that El Toro has done is set up. He does have ticks for just extra defense, and he does have solar collectors surrounding the laser turrets. So it's a little bit harder to get to that lotus. Now, tick going over to the north just in case, or rather to the west, on top of the hill, just in case the glaives go up that way. But they're not, like I said, these laser turrets not quite enough on their own to get rid of all of the glaives. Gets rid of a few of them, but still, Daywalker able to harass out most of El Torero's economy. And the glaives are going to meet up for one big climactic battle, and this actually is not going to happen. Daywalker is retreating, and his glaives are in a really tight spot. The tick coming in from the back as El Torero's glaives come in from the front. And Daywalker's glaives are basically stuck. The tick coming in to stun it out, but... The Glaives should be able to deal with this no problem, and right now, at the same time, Daywalker building more Glaives. He is he has expanded quite nicely along the north, and he does have a Caretaker supporting his factory. So his factory building quite quickly, going for an Air Switch right now as well, and is expanding over to the south. He does have the entire north side and taking down the entire east side. And if I said west before, I meant east. But Escape has actually been successful. Daywalker has managed to get most of his glaives out of there. One of them did go down. The Tick did manage to stun it and get it taken out, but the rest of them able to hide and able to avoid detection. El Torero moving back to defend the north side of the map and possibly harass it as well, so these glaives will have a bit of free reign to deal with this expansion and deal with the one over to the east of it. And at the same time, Daywalker, like I said, he's continuing to build up a lot of forces right now. Both players are about even in terms of their cost and economy. Both players have nearly 4,000 metal in terms of military. There's to say, they're even in terms of military. Their economy, definitely an advantage for Daywalker. He is going to be able to pull ahead from here. It's really going to come down to clever raids and snipes by El Torero, which I don't think he has the currently the awareness for. He does have actually... Oh, he does have radar on a hill. Okay, so El Torero has radar on a hill... Daywalker has also gotten radar on a hill. Both players have improved their awareness substantially of what's going on around the map. But Daywalker also has gotten rid of that radar. Does have Glaives just hanging around the map, so he's aware of what's going on. Has Glaives up to the west, up on this hill over here. He has Glaives over, ready to take out this expansion to the south. And he has him to defend the expansion over the north. So, at the same time, El Torero... Has all of his glaives nicely clumped up in case anything wants to deal with him. Though, at this point, Daywalker has not gone for any ticks, nor has he gone for any warriors. Though, in this map, I'm not surprised no warriors, really. It would be quite difficult to move them around quickly enough to make it worth it. And a tick has gone off, but didn't really manage to do much. Nothing was in the way for it to go off, too. It looks like it was just prematurely detonated. And El Toro appears to be trying to cross Daywalker's formation. Coming in with two dozen glaives... And yes, that's exactly what he's doing. Daywalker retreating, and he can't deal with this, and he's aware of what's going on. He knows that all these glaives are coming in, and getting rid of more radar that El Torero had set up. So El Torero right now, he pretty much only has the radar in his base. That's all he has going for him for radar awareness. However, he does have... Well, he does have a good raid going to the north, but he is getting raided from the south. Daywalker once again getting rid of this expansion to the south, and... No further expansion destruction attempts to this center south. But yeah, the southwest gone down once again. These glaives are just trying to hang out in a position that the laser tower cannot get them. But it looks like there is... Well, a nice raid coming in here from El Torero to the northwest. And it is getting slowed down quite heavily by laser turrets and the Stardust as well, if it gets in range. Most of those glaives, most of El Torero's glaives are not here. Actually, most of them are dead. Looks like they were already killed by that laser before they really had a chance to harass too much. So El Torero once again losing most of his glaives. And deciding that is game. The air switch from Daywalker coming to fruition with the Phoenix. And that is... That is it. That is the game. So we'll be back shortly with another match. This time we're going to be some slightly, I guess, lower profile players. El Torero once again versus Klon. So I'll be just a couple minutes. Stay tuned.